Welcome to Mr. B's Auto Shop. Today we are going to be discussing pressure testing a engine cooling system. We are going to be using the Snap-on Cooling System Tester 262C. Inside of the tester, we will have various adapters and we will have our pressure tester itself. In order to know what adapter you may need, if you need one at all, you can download the chart that indicates what by year and make what adapter is required. For some vehicles, it may say no adapter. And in that case, we would be able to use the standard adapter that comes with the tester. So we're gonna go ahead and test the cooling system of this car. When we're dealing with a cooling system, the cooling system can have extremely high temperatures. So we wanna be careful that we do not burn ourselves. The first step is to go ahead and remove the radiator cap. To make sure that we do not injure ourselves, it is a good idea to place your hand on the upper radiator hose to feel if it is hot and squeeze it to see if it is under pressure before removing the cap to prevent yourself from getting a serious burn injury. The radiator cap may come in two varieties. This one has a red safety lever to prevent you from being hurt, or it may be a standard cap without this lever. If you have the lever type cap, go ahead and lift the lever and that will release the pressure in the system, allowing you to remove the cap safely. If you do not have that safety cap, then you're gonna go ahead and push down on the cap and rotate it till the first position. You'll see how it stops when it reaches the first position. This will vent any excess pressure out of the system and it will prevent the cap from coming off and soaking you in superheated steam which will boil your skin like it's pasta. Once we are sure that there is no pressure in the system, we will then push down and rotate to the release position, and then we can go ahead and remove the cap. Once we have the cap removed, we're gonna do two things. We're gonna compare the cap to our adapter to make sure that they are the same size and shape. So as we see, this cap looks like this. The adapter looks like this. And we can see that those two are very close to each other. And this type of vehicle with the standard radiator neck does not use an adapter. So we can attach the hose for the tool. The tool contains your standard radiator adapter, a flexible hose, a pump assembly with a hand pump, and a gauge. The next thing we're going to do is look at the radiator cap and we're gonna determine how many PSI this system uses. In this case, the system uses a 13 pound cap. If it does not have the pressure rating on the cap, then you will use 13 pounds as the default. When we pressure test the system, we go one pound above the cap rating. So on a 13 pound cap, we will pressure test the system to 14 pounds. On an 18 pound cap, we would pressure test the system to 19 pounds. Do not overpressurize the system or you can create additional problems. Next, we wanna make sure that the radiator has water in it so we can pressure test it. Place your finger inside, it should come back wet. If it does, we're ready to continue the test. If not, go ahead and add water at this point. It's always best to hold the water bottle flat like I am to prevent it from glugging and splashing all over the place. If you pour it this way, you will end up making a bigger mess. Once we have enough water in the system, we're gonna go ahead and attach the adapter to it. So it has what's called a butterfly valve. We wanna make sure that the butterfly valve is in the center position. We then will line up the tab to the opening in the neck. 
push down and you're going to rotate push down and rotate again so there are two positions so you're going to go past the first position to the second position and it locks it in place make sure it's snug make sure your butterfly is free so that way we're not losing pressure we then are going to pump the, the hand pump until the pressure gauge reads in this case 14 psi so you'll notice that the pump reads 14 psi and we're gonna wait we're gonna give it about five minutes if the pressure drops that indicates there is a leak in the system if the pressure holds steady then we don't have a leak at this time uh, you might suspect the water pump or the heater core having a very small leak or you could have a faulty radiator cap that's allowing pressure to leak during driving and we will test the radiator cap in a minute you'll notice that the gauge is dropping slowly when that happens we're now going to look visually to see if we can find a leak on the ground so we are going to go underneath the car and we're going to see if we have a leak present you will notice that we are leaking water so next we are going to find where the leak is We are going to go to the, to the radiator and we're going to look on the side of the radiator and see if we have any wetness or moisture on the side of the radiator. It will help to use a flashlight so you can see down inside. And then we're going to go ahead and check the other side of the radiator as well. If we haven't found a leak yet, we will now go to the upper radiator hose and we will check to see if there's any leaks at that point. If we still haven't found the leak, we are now gonna go to the heater hoses and we're gonna follow them back to the firewall and see once again, is there a leak or not? Then we're gonna follow the one back to the engine. And so far, we have not found a leak. The next thing we wanna look at is called the water pump bypass hose and the water pump bypass hose is located on the water pump typically going to the intake manifold and on this case it is this hose right here and we don't have a leak we're next going to check the mounting where the water pump meets the engine block or the, uh, the uh, timing cover. And if you notice down inside there, we have coolant. You can see that it's bubbling up. So we have a leak where the water pump meets the timing cover. At this point, we would go ahead and make the repair and then retest the system. If you do not find a leak, check inside the car on the passenger floorboard next to the glove box or below the glove box. If you have moisture on the carpeting, this would indicate that you have a heater core that is leaking and then you'd have to make the correct repair at that point after the test is complete we now need to release the pressure in the system there are two ways that you can release the pressure the first method is by turning the butterfly valve and that will release the pressure or if you just pull on the hose that will release the pressure as well and you can hear the air pressure leaking out if you do not release the pressure and you take the cap off you're going to take a bath in coolant 
and that's not a good bath at all. Go ahead and remove the cap. If you are going to do the repair, you can go ahead and do the repair at this time. If you're not going to do the repair, then go ahead and reassemble the vehicle and give it back to the person or drive it to your, the store, whatever you need to do. We also may need to test the radiator cap. The radiator cap is a very common problem. Out of all the radiator caps I've tested, I would say at least half of them fail. So we will need a radiator cap adapter in order to test this cap. To select the correct cap testing adapter, once again, we will refer to the adapter chart and you'll notice it has a cap adapter column, which will give you the correct adapter to use. Once we have selected the correct adapter, we will then attach the pressure tester to the adapter. We're gonna go ahead and install it and go completely to the stop. Make sure that the butterfly is in the released position and that the cap is tester adapter is secure. We will then install the cap onto the adapter. Make sure it rotates completely to the stop. If not, it will lose pressure and give us a faulty reading. Also, if you have a lever style cap, make sure that the lever is in the down position. Make sure that you do not pressure the system more than one pound above the specification. So 13 PSI, we pressure test the system to 14 pounds. Again, if you exceed that, you can cause damage to the vehicle's cooling system and well, you're causing more problems than you're fixing. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and pump the pump and go to the correct pressure. You will notice that if I exceed the pressure, the pressure will return to the specifications, which is 13 PSI. So at this point, the cap is passing the test, but we're going to let it sit for a few minutes and make sure the cap is in serviceable condition. Why is the radiator cap important? Well, the radiator cap not only prevents the collapse of a radiator hose by allowing air to enter or water from the overflow during a vacuum condition, it also increases the boiling point by raising the pressure. For every pound of pressure that we put on water, it raises the boiling point 3.25 or three and a quarter degrees. A 10 pound cap will then increase the boiling point of the coolant by 32.5 degrees. Most cooling systems today run somewhere between 13 and 18 PSI. This puts it well above the boiling point of water. If the cap will not maintain pressure, then the cooling the water in the cooling system or the coolant will boil and uh, turn to a vapor leaving the system. This will cause the vehicle to overheat. It is a very critical portion of your cooling system and it needs to be tested at any time that you test the rest of the cooling system. Do not forget to test the cap. We're now going to look at the gauge again. And you'll notice that the pressure has dropped below 13 PSI, which indicates the cat is not holding pressure over the long period of time. Therefore, the cap is faulty and must be re replaced. Once we've completed the test, go ahead and re release the pressure from the tester and you can release it once again by pulling the hose to the side or by rotating the butterfly valve. Once you do that, you can remove the adapter from the tester and then go ahead and remove the cap and then reinstall the cap on the car. Make sure that when you reinstall the cap that it goes all the way to the stop, otherwise the cap will be loose 
and it will not hold pressure. If it's a vent style cap, push the vent down and this will complete during the cap test. So today we've covered pressure testing a cooling system and testing a cap, as well as locating a leak in the engine compartment. Thank you for watching Mr. B's Auto Shop, and I will see you next time.